Yeah, it won't start at all. This sucks. What's going on guys? We are back here with Lewis. I think hopefully at this point I have posted the uh, unfortunate blowing up of the Procharge Beast. Uh, that is Lewis's uh, Procharged uh, GT350. It's a 2017. This is a Gen 1 Voodoo. We are of course over at Modular Head Shop. Uh, we did a really cool build series with my uh, 5.8 liter uh, GT500 engine build. So we are starting off once again here with Jordan and uh, we're gonna be tearing it down to see what went wrong. Um, now I have a few theories, Jordan has some theories, Lewis has some theories. I think Sam uh, Lewis's tuner has some theories, but ultimately it was probably running a lot of boost on a cold night with 93. That's an equation that is not really good, but my guess is that it blew a head gasket, uh, induced water into a cylinder and bent a rod. But uh, we'll see once we get this torn down, we got the bare long block here. So we're gonna get this torn down and see what it looks like. Uh, see what the condition of the heads, the head gasket, the block, see what's reusable and what is not. All right, so we're here with Jordan from Modular Head Shop. Hey everybody. So what are we doing? Tearing down Lewis's uh, GT350 engine. I was told that it let go during a pull on 93 octane on a cold night. So Andrew had the pan off, said there's at least one bent rod, but we're gonna see if there's any damage to the cylinder heads, any damage to the block. Hopefully it's pretty easy to fix. Um, and then we'll discuss options to yeah, got to talk uh, talk over some few things and figure out. Um, you know, you're obviously going to spec out. You know, a little bit of head work and rods and pistons, ARP. You know, yep. build it for a good amount of power. Yeah, these heads are really good from the factory. Um, I mean, what I typically do with the Voodoo stuff is just put bronze guides in it and uh, and blend their CNC work. Uh, and that's it, really. So. Yeah, and I'm excited for this one. This is a flat plane crank, so hopefully it's saveable. Yeah, I told Lewis if it's not saveable, he should go to a cross plane, but... We'll, we'll see we'll what see. happens. We'll see what happens, yeah, so... But, yeah, let's go ahead and tear into it, dude. Alright, sounds good. Alright, well, after battling with this balancer for about an hour... Yeah, I guess we could talk about it, because no one ever talks about the struggles, but, uh... I'd say your balancer needs about a thou to thou and a half a press fit and that pretty much the balancer being too tight is the reason for most crankshaft snout failures. They're just, they're not measured. It's something that guys are just, they don't have the tools to measure them properly and they're just slamming them on. And this one about broke the tool getting it off. So we finally got that off. Now we're going to go ahead, pull the valve covers, pull the timing cover and see what we're working with underneath. Yeah, we had to hone my uh, ATI when we put it on the, the GT500. Yep. I got a rod hone set up just for that now. So. Yeah. Cool. All right, here we go. Everything seems to be intact. Oil looks a little dark though. Mm -hmm. Oil looks dark. Some build up down there. Yeah, it definitely does look dark. We didn't even see that. <laughs> I didn't film it, but uh. We just pulled the dipstick out and it's like this, so that's that's not a good sign. Yeah, so, something hit that. <laughs> something in the crankcase hit that. Yeah. I guess right. I need a new uh, dipstick. <laughs> You're gonna need a few new things, Lewis. <laughs> a little bit, yeah. Oh, no peekaboo in the box. That's good. Yeah, it definitely goes easily.
here comes the pan. Yeah. So with these plastic pans, you can't see that well into them. I think we'll probably end up replacing the whole pan, right? Because you can't really clean these yeah. very easily. Yeah, that or we'll go to something aftermarket, but yeah, we'll have to see. You, you really can't see much in there. Nope. Now I know if you flip it over, you'll probably see uh, something. See what we're working with here. A little bit of something there. Oh. What you got? Wow. Yeah, that rod is really bent, bro. Holy yeah. Holy shit. That's a super S about us. And I can tell you there's one thing that will cause that. Water doesn't compress. Yeah. I, uh, I think it was already like that. Yeah? Yeah. I think it folded the rod and the rod stuck against the counterweight right here. Yeah. I think one other uh, piston that's kind of sitting, this one I think is sitting a little funky. Oh, the piston? Yeet. Oh, yeah. That, it's like cock in the... Uh... Oh, this block's definitely not good to be reused with at least being sleeved if it's not cracked all the way through. That piston is sideways. Yeah. Do you see it? It's like come, come in. Oh, come on now. We can put that in the vise and straighten it out. Bullshit. <laughs> a little bit of heat. Right. Well, right. little tappy tap. So I think uh, this one looked a little funky. You tell me what you think. Because it looked like it was so close to the counterweight. Yeah, they're all close to the counterweight though. Yeah. That's why you're the professional. So I noticed that all of these have a little bit of play. When I moved them back, obviously that one's got nothing. Yeah, because it's just cocked sideways. So we just don't know if we killed uh, the crank there or not. But it, you can't see like a major like skid mark of the, it didn't rotate multiple times, it just stopped. It just stopped. Oh yeah. That's probably yeah. why it cracked it down. Oh yeah. So we'll have to pull the heads and see what uh, it looks like. But that's a very bent rod. It's like deja vu. Nice. Hey, mine wasn't that bad. Mine was a little, like, little turned into a little bit of an S. <laughs> now, the bullet was pretty bent, but it still ran. That was a stock rod, though, right? That was a stock rod. That was 400 something worse. These rods are way different than the stock rods of. It takes okay. a lot to bend these rods. They're pretty strong. Yeah. All right. Well. Yeah. Oil stuff is dirty, though. Yeah. Come take a look at this, Brad. Oh no. <laughs> that is not good, man. We can train her out, right? Little heat. <laughs> yeah. A few taps with a hammer. Little heat and hammer. Put it in the vise and straighten it up. <laughs> That's what Thomas said. That's what Thomas said, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we gotta get we think I like it. Don't let people think that's what goes on around here. <laughs> <laughs> Don't put that on YouTube. Oh man. <laughs> that footage will be cut out. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun to joke though. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> How's it look? Oh my god, Lewis. I think we're gonna be able to reuse them. Dude, they look badass. They look fine, actually. Tune-up looks pretty good. A little more carbon on this one than the, all the others, but yeah, it looks pretty good. Now we just need to get that dome top out of the way. Correct. Crowding the area. <laughs> How's the head gasket look? That's pretty good. 
I mean, typically, if the head gasket was bad, you'd see a lot of scrubbing around here. That's what I typically see, but it looks pretty good to me. It's really on there, too. Looks good. Uh, that valve's definitely bent a little. Both valves are bent. Uh oh. I can see it from this angle. You can just see a little bit of light though, but they're. Good. That piston sideways. Cool. You're not bad at all. All right. So, what you think, Jordan? Looks pretty decent, actually. I hope the aluminum isn't cracked in the block. We'll have to see there, but um, the piston is cocked sideways. The valves are the two intake valves. I could see just from looking down the port. They were just they were just barely bent. So you just see a little bit of light. The other side. Other than that, everything looks pretty good. I mean, head gasket looks pretty good. Yeah, definitely in the right place to get some heads fixed up. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, and then obviously this piston is uh, a little drunk. Yeah, a little drunk. <laughs> There's some a uh, little bit of score on the cylinder wall. Yeah, I think this is the other one that I was looking at, but maybe uh, maybe that one's fine. Yeah, from what I saw on the bottom end, that's the only one that's, that's real bad. I mean, it's got that's some... Eight, right? Yeah. It's got some scoring there on the, the wall. Unless, uh, do you see that? Mm -hmm. In the middle there? This one has Right some, here? Yeah. yeah. Is that normal? Mm -hmm. Not normal. I mean, it's normal what you typically see when you're tearing down a, a you know, engine making that kind of power. But uh, I'm thinking the rings may have butted just a little bit. Yeah. See any reason why the water would have been all inside the, uh, the cylinder in the pan? Because when we drained the uh, the oil, um, nothing but water came out for at least 15 seconds. Straight coolant, actually. I mean, it could have. Oh, uh, you know what? Yeah, because the block's cracked. Oh, there it is. Yep. Yeah. That's why it did crack it. Like, you can barely see it on Sorry, camera. Sorry guys, the lighting's not off. Awesome yeah, you can hand. barely see that, but... That would make sense. No, it's cr look, you can yeah. see it all the way down. Oh wow, yeah, now you can see it. Yeah. So that's why the water got... Yeah. So probably with a... So the, the water pressure? just went straight in here and then the piston rings weren't holding the water up because the piston's cocked sideways, so... Yep. So would you say it detonated? Or what, what would you say, the cause? Oh, probably detonation. I mean, yeah. I mean, 93. It's just it's it's a lot of boost for 93 on a cold night. I mean, that's the same same way. I, um, you know, I've been the rod on mine on a cold night. It's just making more boost. How much boost was it? Uh, I saw 13 on a hot day, and it was what 40 degrees that night. Yeah. It was probably negative DA. It was it was a nice night for it was beautiful. It was oh man, that thing was kicking ass. <laughs> well, it almost cool looks up. to me like this one's messed up too. Yeah. This piston is not sitting it straight. straight. No. No. Mm -hmm. Sitting like these two, these are the two cylinders that uh, had the water in them. And Actually, this one over here looks a little bowed up on the side too. That's the one that I was thinking from yeah, my see. first I'm, I'm glance. I'm thinking you're gonna see ring lands lifted on a couple, on at least these two. So. I want to see if we can. Hopefully, we can get these out. I mean, the, it is locked up solid. Big hammer, dude. <laughs> BFH. <laughs> we got a couple of those here. You know, it was nice though. I, I noticed that. You know. Here, you still had some play here, and here, and here, but obviously no play there. Man, Lewis, you did good. Yes, it's good, but it's, you know, it's bad, but it's still, you know. Well, I meant good in a bad way. Oh yeah, good in a bad way. <laughs> <laughs> you, did, you did a good number on it. It could be worse. It just like locked 
up solid. It never even ran oh, again. You're in the way, Jordan. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> Out of my way. <laughs> so hopefully we can get this uh, crank to start moving. See what the bearings look like. That'll tell a little bit of a story too. Yeah. It probably didn't have, you know, it probably happened pretty quickly though. Well, What's Lewis up, said baby? that he was doing a pull, right? And I'm then he yeah, said, did it start vibrating? No. No, you no. said it laid over a little bit, right? It yeah. felt slow. It felt yeah, like it dropped a little uh, power, and then he put the clutch in. RPM came down, and that was it. Yep. Oh, she's real happy. Mm. Oh yeah. That's alright. It's just because it's pinched, so. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Impressive. <laughs> Now I gotta get this past here. Crank looks good. Yeah. Oh, that's gonna be a bitch. I, I think I missed that clip. You mind putting that back up in the head? Real quick? <laughs> the, I mean, the block. These rings are thin, boy. So, we aren't gonna be reusing these bad boys. Uh, no. No, but they seem okay. I mean, the pins aren't bent. All right. Well. The only thing I can try to do is knock this over and then rotate the crankshaft. Mm-hmm. Yep, that worked. It's moving, holy shit. <laughs> oh, man. You got it. I can't believe it moved. Oh, man. Dude, that's crazy. Dude, you can keep this rod. You can hang it up on the wall or something. <laughs> yeah, I want to make a trophy out of it or something. I still have my bent rod. <laughs> Mine's not that bad, though. I think I lost the two-valve one, though. It might still be here. The two-valve one was impressive. <laughs> Remember the uh, the R two-valve? Oh, yeah. <laughs> From the bullet? I don't think that's here anymore. It's probably... Yeah, I think it was trash. The scrap yard. Yep. How's the bearing? Pretty decent minus the little polishing. That's because it got twisted to the side, but yeah, not too shabby. Yeah, and the so crank. Good. Crank looks pretty good. That's a strong ass crank in there. And knock that guy out. Uh -oh. oh, it's just collapsed. All right, so look at that. That's nice. I actually did a pretty good job though. I mean, this is a nice piston. Yeah, they say the factory piece, pistons are okay. It's just the ring. I think it's the ringlands are having to have issues with the rings. Mm, the I mean, the ringlands look like they're hard anodized, so I mean, that's good. I'm not really familiar with the stock pistons in these. Well, that is one bent rod, Lewis. Yep. Yep. Yeah, you can see the skirt. Yeah, the skirt collapsed just a little bit, but. That's, 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 that would explain. We never. He did a couple times oil. there. Oh wow. Yeah. You didn't hear any knocking? No. Hmm. So it definitely yeah, I told hit. You I was on uh, top of fifth gear. I'm not really worried about keeping these in order. So. Not bad. Not bad. You know, I don't think I've actually seen too many voodoo uh, teardowns. Um, no. Most of the failures, uh, people ended up doing a warranty replacement. All right. Yep. Now, here you go. I would say that right there is detonation. You're pounding that bearing back into the crankshaft. Yeah, it's Not bad, but that's, mm -hmm. that's a sign of it for sure. With these being such high compression, that's why 93 is just... 93 is not good for this kind of compression.
Same deal. You can almost kind of see that, that darker shadow here on the top side. Keep that right there for a sec. Yeah. Yeah, I can see it really good there. Yeah, because it's the detonation, it's bouncing it, right? Well, you're pretty much, you're, you're firing before you get to the top, so right. it's like hitting a wall. For those that don't know, detonation is like uncontrolled explosions, right? I think one of these is the one that I was a little suspicious of. Of the piston, right? Yep. I mean, the rings are. In the skirt. Are Same thing here, though. Right in the middle. Yeah, you can see that a little ghost spot. Hold it a little bit towards me. Yep, I can see it really well now. Same thing. Same thing, but the rings are good still. I, I don't. I don't really see where the ring lands lifted or anything. Hmm. Same thing though, I mean, it's the detonation worse than the others. Let's see if we can get a zoomed in. Yep, yeah, you can see that right there. It's been free too, which is nice. Mm -hmm. I'll show you that it's not bent. I mean, we'll check it for straightness, but typically if the crank's bent, it's not going to want to turn over good or it's going to have a hump in it. Yeah, we'll be able to see with the main bearings too. Nothing really to see there. Sound is weird. Yep, yeah, you can see it. Rings and everything feel pretty good. Yeah, I had no oil consumption in this engine at all. Yeah, but it's just, it's bent in the pin bore mm -hmm. of the piston. That's definitely one to hang up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's some scarring at the top. It's hard to say if that's from before or after because it's kind of on the opposite side. I'm thinking, I'm thinking this is from the rod bending. So. Yeah. You can see the mark of where it stopped on the crank too over here. On this, on side. this side? Yep. Yeah. Really, it could have been a lot worse. It could have exited the rod, uh, oh, yeah. exited the block, and yeah. kept kept going. Yeah. Would have sent all the metal through the heads and everything Get the else. Crank out. Get our gate plan. How's it work? Not bad. See a little bit of trash going through there, right there. Nothing awful. At least something went through there, though. All right. Number three. Kind of the same deal. Not, not awful. Definitely a little wear, though. Did you have this car since new? No, I bought it with 5,000 miles on it. Mm. Mm. Maybe grandma was lighting the light it too much. <laughs> I let it warm up good. How's it looking? So there's really only that one area back there that it made mm. contact with. Mm. Which is not a big deal because you balance it anyways, you remove the material anyways. As long as she's not bent. That's yeah. it. Well, we'll know when we go to spin it up. Yep. Ooh, look at the flat plane. 
Yeah, I see that spot where uh, you said there could be Mallory missing, or they just yeah, that drilled was a because hole. Because they drilled the uh, the rod journals are drilled all the way through. Yep. First one of these I've taken apart, just like your uh, GT500. I that. typically just do them. Nice. Order the parts brand new and put them together. That's it. Uh, have you ever seen the oil squirters in these? I did not. I never seen They're them. They're right here. They're actually the same as Andrews. Oh, really? Yep. Oh, look at that. You got a little ball valve in there, and then they're they're drilled back here. Oh. You can actually see uh, that one right there pretty good. Mm-hmm. Yep. Nice. Yeah. That, was a, that was a good one, dude. Nice. Is it all the way down? I can't see it in the no. camera. It no. goes right to here. Yeah, you can't really feel it at the bottom. Right to here. Yeah. That's how the oh. water got in. That's how it is, yep. I see. Oh, bueno. Welder up and sender, right? <laughs> Only if we're at the track. <laughs> yeah, don't don't mind the mess. All right, so what's our conclusion here, boys? Bent rod, cocked the piston sideways, cracked the sleeve, or cracked the cracked the block pretty much halfway down the cylinder. Uh, signs of detonation on all the rods, but not bad. So the plane is lower the compression a little bit. Get a better tuning window. For everybody out there, these engines do not have a problem making power. I don't know why a lot of guys want to run a ton of compression with forced induction. I mean, for this application, it's fine. It's This was a stock engine. But if you're going to build one for forced induction, you need to lower it a little bit. Um, you, know, you can only lower your timing so much. So, we'll lower it just a little bit. Um, we're just gonna figure out what he what he wants to do for a block. So yeah, he's got some decisions to make. You know, to sleeve it, not to sleeve a. Well, for one, you need a new block. So a new block. Yeah, he needs a new block. So the absolute cheapest option is a non-sleeve Gen Three block. I'm good with that for about a thousand wheel. Um, but. He's probably going to get the itch. So. Yeah, I mean, when I originally talked to you about my GT500 engine, I said, I want to make 900 to 1,000 wheel. Look at me now. Motec, built motor, built trans, built rear end, yeah. 1,350 wheel. But it's together still. It's it been is. two years, a lot of dyno pulls, a lot of street pulls. A and lot. Yep. That's exactly why we use the top-notch components in that build, though. I knew you were going to be beating the shit out of it. So. <laughs> but, uh, so if anyone wants to check out Jordan's stuff, you have a lot of uh, tech videos up on your channel. Not a lot. Well, you have <laughs> some You have some cool ones. I the cam cool degree. Ones. Yeah. And uh, there, there's a few ones there. There'll be so. some more out. I just, I haven't been motivated much this year. Parts have been extremely hard for us to get at the volume that we're needing them. So, that's and of course, a the of time. Mod Nationals video that you guys put out too, right? Yeah. Yeah, my new guy Joey made a little one at Mod Nats. So that was awesome. Yeah. And then, of course, if you need head work, parts, all that stuff, um, yeah. you guys are open all week. <laughs> yep, all week, 9 to 5. We're so. going to be closed for Christmas Eve and probably New Year's Eve. That's it. Yeah. So we'll leave that on that. Lewis isn't going to sleep tonight. Nope. I'm not going <laughs> to kind of make a decision on a block. Yes. But uh, make sure you slap the like button down below. Leave a comment. Let us know what you think. And we will cover... The 5-2 Voodoo build. So I'll see you guys in the next one. All right. See y'all.